I'm Susan Kemmer. This slide presentation is going to help you to prepare for your test on module 11 of Apology as General Science. I'm going to pause briefly after each question to give you a chance to answer, but if you need more time to answer, just hit the pause button to give yourself time to formulate your answer. Um, so we're going to pray before we get started. Father, thank you so much for this privilege of being able to study your amazing creation. Help us to do our best, and by your Holy Spirit, please help us to remember all that we're studying. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's get started. What bones are part of the appendicular skeleton? It may help to think of your appendages. That's right, it's your arms, your legs, fingers, and toes. What bones are part of your axial skeleton? It might be helpful to picture an axis that goes through the core. The bones of the axial skeleton include your skull, your backbone, and your rib cage. Okay, quiz time. Let's see if you were paying attention to those last two slides. What were the two kinds of skeletal bones in the human body? Remember, think appendages, Yes, appendicular bones. And now think axis or core. Good, axial bones. Let's move on. What two main things are bones made of? Minerals and collagen. What purpose or quality do minerals give your bones? Those rocks should give you a clue. It makes them hard. What about the collagen? What purpose or quality does collagen give bones? It makes them elastic. You can check out those small elastic threads running through this photo. Those are collagen threads. Again, it gives us a great example of the intricacy of God's design. Your bones are both strong and hard, and they have some elasticity as well. Isn't that a cool picture of the two kinds of marrow that you have? What happens inside your bone marrow? It's where your blood cells are made. Your skeleton is on the inside of your body. It's called an endoskeleton. But what do you call a skeleton on the outside of your body? An exoskeleton. And there are many creatures that have exoskeletons. All of these animals with exoskeletons fall into a certain class. Do you know what this class of animals is called? Arthropods. It's interesting that man is always taking God's designs and copying them for man's use. It shows that there really is nothing new under the sun, as Solomon said. God already thought of it all. Scientists often study God's design and then look for ways to apply those designs to other inventions. Here are some examples of man-made exoskeletons. And if you've seen Iron Man, you know what I'm talking about. Let's talk about muscles. There are three kinds of muscles in your body, but we're only going to talk about two kinds. The first is your skeletal muscles. Obviously, skeletal, skeletal muscles are attached to what? They're attached to your skeleton. What do your skeletal muscles help your skeleton or your body to do? To move. They provide motion. Do these muscles move on their own involuntarily where you have no control of, over them? Or do you make them move voluntarily where you control them? They move voluntarily. Basically, you volunteer your muscles to work. You decide to pick up your fork or scratch an itch. And these are also the muscles that make you smile or frown as well. You control them. What connects your skeletal muscles to your bones? A tendon. It might help you to remember that tendons connect muscle to bone if you think of that strong tendon that runs up the back of your lower leg from your ankle. What is that tendon called? 
the Achilles tendon. Here's an awesome picture of a surgery being done to repair someone's Achilles tendon. It's truly fascinating how God um, has provided us with such advances. This person is actually going to be able to walk again when the doctor reattaches those two torn ends of his Achilles tendon. So tendons connect muscle to bone, but what connects bone to bone? For example, what keeps the bottom part of your leg from disconnecting and falling apart from the top part of your leg at the knee joint? A ligament. Have you ever heard of people tearing their ACL in their knee? The ACL, um, the L in that uh, abbreviation stands for ligament, and that might help you to remember. Take a moment to look at the ligaments that hold this knee joint together. And if you think that's amazing, look how God designed your hand. Look at all the ligaments in every joint. Could that possibly, possibly ever have just evolved? Yeah, right. I don't think so. Would you like to see an ACL surgery on a knee? All right, first, do you see that diagonal ligament right in the middle of the knee diagram and how it goes right into the end of the femur? All right, see if you can see the ACL ligament on the next photo. It's that diagonal ligament going right into the end of the femur. I know it's gross, but it's really cool. That's pretty amazing, right? You learned about tendons and ligaments, but what coats the ends of your bones to protect and cushion them from neighboring bones? It's your cartilage. Can you see the cartilage on the ends of the knee bones? Imagine how your knee would feel if your cartilage looked like that second knee. You can remember that cartilage protects and cushions your joints when they move the same way a car protects and cushions you when you travel. An interesting note, do you know what else is made of cartilage in your body? Two things, your ears and your nose. Go ahead and mush your ears and nose around to feel the cartilage. Pretty cool, huh? Remember we were studying two kinds of muscle in your body? The skeletal muscles were the first ones, and this is the second one we're going to look at. They're called smooth muscles. What are smooth muscles? They are the muscles in your body that you have no control over. You couldn't stop them if you tried. They work involuntarily, such as your heart muscle and the muscles of your digestive system and the muscles of your lungs to help you breathe. And by the way, this shows what smoking does to your lungs. This is the reason you should never smoke. It is not cool. It destroys you and it is definitely not worth it. We're going to move on to an entirely new subject. What do you call the process that causes skin cells to harden and die? It's called keratinization. So what is made on your body through the process of keratinization? Well, one thing is your hair. And another thing is your nails. Another uh, memory clue to help you remember keratinization is to remember that carrots are hard vegetables. And you have to admit that these carrots look a lot like this lady's nails. And rhino horns are all made of keratin. And poachers will maim or kill an animal for its horns. It's very sad. Let's change subjects again and talk about everyone's favorite subject, sweat. But first, let's do a bit of review from Module 9. What do all bacteria need in order to survive? Water. Now, if that's the case, what's one way that sweat contributes to your good health? Your sweat feeds the good bacteria on your skin. Remember, that's our first line of defense against harmful germs. Let's talk plants for a moment. If you remember your Greek and Latin roots, you'll remember that photos means light 
Any idea what phototropism is? It's the tendency of plants to grow toward the light. There are five classes of vertebrates in Kingdom Animalia. I'm going to give you a one or two word clue for each and you tell me what class it is. Fur, mammals. Feathers, birds. Fins, fish. Metamorphosis, amphibians. Scaled skin, reptiles. And the final, the final one we're going to look at is animals without a backbone. These fall into the phylum of invertebrates. Now, kingdom animalia is divided into two phylum, backboned animals, which are divided into those five classes we just talked about, and animals without backbones. And I just said this word. What do you call an animal without a backbone? An invertebrate. On this speed round, I'm going to give you a clue and you tell me what class it's in. If it has hair and nurses its young, what class is it in? Mammal. Creatures in this class go through metamorphosis. They're born in water with gills, but they develop lungs and live on land when they are grown. What class is this? Amphibians. If it lives in water its entire life and it breathes through gills and it has fins, what class is it in? Fish. Animals in this class hatch from eggs and they're covered with feathers. What class is it? Birds. If it lives on land and is covered with scaly skin and it's cold blooded, what class is it? Reptile. For this speed round, I'm going to show you a photo of an animal and you're going to tell me what class or phylum it belongs to. This is a speed round. And again, just for your review, those five classes are mammal, bird, fish, amphibian, reptile, and then the phylum invertebrate. Fish. Amphibian. Mammal bird, amphibian, reptile, fish, bird, invertebrate, mammal, reptile, invertebrate. What is this guy? amphibian, mammal, invertebrate, reptile, fish. And my favorite, what class? Bird. Now, if you were able to go through the slides easily with a good grasp of the concepts and you've read completely through module 11 in your textbook and answered the on your own questions, then you're ready for your test. Let's pray that God's gonna help you to remember what you've learned and will help you to do your best. Father God, please help these kids to remember what they've learned, to study with integrity and joy and to glorify you as students of your kingdom. Help them to do well on their test. In Jesus' name, amen.